This is an Anami podcast. Hello, my grown ups, my grow gang, my growers. It's great to see you again. Uh, or for you to see me, I guess, because I can't see you. Um, I'm, I'm glad you're back is what I'm trying to say. I'm glad you're here listening to the pod. I, I love being here. Um, even though I do love being here today, <laughs> I want to talk to you about some pet peeves of mine. All right. I live in Los Angeles and I drive all the time. I drive all the time, everywhere, all the time. This studio, an hour away from my house. It's just, I'm in the car all the time. And there is some etiquette that just isn't followed on the road, okay? Let's talk highway etiquette real quick. Furthest left lane is for passing. It's for people who want to drive fast. If you're not one of them, no judgment, all good. Get the fuck over, okay? If you're in the furthest left lane and cars are passing you on the right or riding your bumper, they're not assholes. They're trying to go faster and you're in their way and you're the reason there's traffic. Sorry. Uh, I like to go fast. I like to go fast, okay? I, 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 I just call it active driving. I'm an active driver. I'm trying to get somewhere. It's all good if you just want to sit on the freeway casually and listen to NPR and, and think about life and just really take it easy. That's not me. That's, I'm trying to go and you're not, and it bothers me, okay? Uh, th this, this is the same, like this is for five lane highways in LA, but this is the same for like two lane highways when I'm on road trips and there's trucks in the right lane. This is how road trips go. There's a two lane highway, trucks in the right lane. When someone's in the left lane and they're passing a truck at like 0.5 miles per hour faster than the truck, so it takes like 10 minutes to get by the one truck, what are we doing? Are you comfortable driving next to an 18-wheeler on a rural highway? It's frightening. Pass. Pass with active... Uh, with activity, pass, make it happen. In Europe, by the way, there are most places I've been in Europe, it is illegal to overtake someone on the right. It's illegal. They're not allowed to overtake a car in a right lane. The left lane is for overtaking and for passing. So you literally can't block that lane. People will ride your bumper because they can't legally pass you on the right. So let's all just be considerate of the flow of traffic. Don't drive slow in the left lane. Stay in the middle. Stay on the right. It's all good. Uh, also, if you're hanging a right turn, don't swing to the left to hang that right turn. You don't have to. The car will turn. It's okay. If you're going right, you don't have to swing it wide left to make that right. Okay. These are just things I'm noticing on the road that upset me. I gotta, I gotta calm down. I've had too much coffee. I'm gonna have some more. Okay, guys, listen, we have a great episode today. I swear. It's not just me ranting about traffic and poor social etiquette. Okay, last thing, last thing. We are all on the road together. We are part of a community. We have to be considerate of one another because we are all functioning in this ecosystem together. So do things to make it easier on everybody. And part of that is the flow of traffic, being aware of what you're doing, you know, being aware of how you're impacting traffic. I'm exhausted. I blacked out. Okay. Today on the pod, oh, we have a great guest. Um, I met Simi. Uh, on a web series that we shot together for our friend King Batch, uh, Andrew Batchelor. So I met her some years ago, and I have just continued to be her friend and her fan. She is an amazing actress, a martial artist slash stunt actress, um, and incredible YouTube TikTok content creator. She has an amazing couple YouTube channels with so many funny skits. Her and I did one that was a, uh, a parody on the Netflix show You, kind of about the stalker. So she stalks me in this skit, and it's funny. You can go check that out, but check out all her things. And um, 
we have a really great conversation. It went places I didn't expect it to go. Um, we we really get into the process of grief, and I didn't see that coming, but that's what happens in life. Simi's been going through some things, and we talked about it. Um, we also talked about her uh, moving to L.A. and abandoning her parents' wishes for her to be a doctor or a lawyer or a pharmacist and her pursuing uh, acting, which is the most unstable thing um, to pursue, <laughs> and the bravery that it took and just that she hit the ground running. Um, we talk about how she got into social media content creation and eventually becoming part of like the major social media Hollywood Vine crew, um, you know, Lele Pons and Hannah Stocking and Batch and Logan Paul and all, all of them, like we're living in this place together, creating at the same time. So we talked a little bit about that. Um, and we talked about her life and where she's at um, in her emotional growth. And it's a really beautiful and fun conversation. I had not seen Simi, she reminded me, in two years. So it was really great to sit and catch up. And I know you'll enjoy this conversation. So give us a like, give us a follow, give us a rating. We're still growing this pod here, and uh, the Ned's pod is out and growing as well. And all of this has been really fun for me, and I hope it's been fun for you too. Enjoy this episode with Simi Singh. Simi! Hi. Hi. Hi, Devin. It's great to see you. Good to see you too. We haven't seen each other in a while. Since 2021. Holy shit! We filmed that video, Yeah. and I haven't seen you since. Um, but a uh, long story for, for what, why? <laughs> Do we have an hour on this? Yeah, we do. We literally do. So, <laughs> so, um, right after we filmed that, I actually right after we I posted it, I uh, lost my grandma. Oh. So I like sh I just lost her. I couldn't find her again. <laughs> no, um, she passed, and uh, she was the closest one of like the closest people to me, and I kind of lost my footing there for a bit. Mm. So last year was just kind of like figuring out what grief means and how to deal with that and stuff and dude so not a lot of people saw me last year yeah luke did luke saw me all the time yeah because i was like hi yeah <laughs> need <Help> me <laughs> hi i need hold me <laughs> so um but yeah uh, wow. so yeah we're, uh, we're back. i know what that's like yeah i've yeah. been there yeah, yeah 2019 i lost my my dad's mom and mm -hmm. my mom's mom had already passed and my, when my dad's mom passed um it was the last grandparent in <gasps> my family and that not only like my specific love for her mm -hmm. and her love for me that I missed, but it was like, there's no more of that generation in my family. Yeah. I'm like, it hit super hard. So yeah, yeah, it's a process with that. Yeah, I kind of grew up with them. So it was kind of like, I didn't really know, like I didn't, I used to like every situation in life, like you, I just kind of like white knuckled it, you know? Just, yeah. Brown knuckled, <laughs> brown knuckled, brown <laughs> um, knuckled. But you know, I, but this time, I, you know how I do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but this time, I just, I couldn't do that. Mm. And I couldn't figure out why. And I was like, but this is the first time I've ever like dealt with grief in that way. Mm. And so I actually wanted to deal with it and, you know, did therapy for a bit um, and just kind of like figured out what that meant and really try to like go through it. I mean, I'm still figuring it out, but sure. you know, that's why. That's why nobody really saw me last year, so. Dude, that's, I mean, it's awful and I'm sorry, but mm -hmm. but also like, this is our life like it's life grief is a you cannot white knuckle through no. grief no brown knuckle you cannot either. brown you can't any color any knuckle. color knuckle out. if anyone doesn't know that term <laughs> it's about gripping the steering wheel so hard that your knuckles turn white like mm -hmm. it just means just like grip it and power through yeah um grief in my experience i have found is not you can't it is it is a deep process that happens like through you and if you try to white knuckle it, mm -mm. it's gonna come out of you in so many weird and inappropriate ways. Oh my God, seeing a random person on down walking down the street on a walker, game over. My whole day done. was done. Yep. And I would just be, I would just like have to park my car, I would be crying and I was like, what is this? You know, like Grief. I would see, yeah, right? And then, <laughs> then later I was like, oh, I think I need help. <laughs> I think I need to figure that out, so. Yeah, I would like if culturally we uh, were kind of taught more and supported more of 
how complicated and emotional, grief is an emotional process. Mm -hmm. So if you're someone who is highly intellectual or doesn't tap into your feelings a lot, grief, grief's hard for someone, I'm, I'm highly emotional, have been my whole life, no highly way. sensitive. Grief is hard for me and I'm tapped in. Mm -hmm because that's the nature of it. It is an emotional process that you have to go to. You have to have that cry about yeah. the person in the fucking walker. Like yeah. you have to let the feelings out. That's the only way you get through it is all yeah. the cries and all the confusing feelings and mm -hmm. whatever the anger, if it's anger, right? Mm -hmm. I don't wanna say I'm highly intellectual, but I'm also, <laughs> I'm a very logical person. Yes. So like I never, I'm not tapped in. You know, I'm yeah. definitely not tapped into like I wasn't yeah. until a couple of years ago I started like kind of working on the emotional side of myself and I was like, why am I not? How are you gonna be an actor and not be tapped in homie? Yeah. Like so I started like working on that a, like a couple of years ago And then this time around I had to really work on it because <sighs> man anyways great start to your podcast honestly, <laughs> honestly, it is not where I thought we'd start <laughs> But it's a topic. I'm actually I'm glad you brought it up. I think people will resonate. We, we all go through this, especially in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. it, grief can happen even when it's not a personal loss or someone you're personally connected to. Grief can happen when like an idea about the world changes for you, you yeah. know? Yeah. When you realize, you know, yeah. maybe America's not the shining star on the hill that you thought, <laughs> like when you learn, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. when you learn truths about the world that change yeah. your concept of it, um, grief can come up then and it can be really confusing. Grief, grief happens, I, I can't believe it happens, but grief happens when people find out celebrities die and they didn't yeah. even know these celebrities. Yeah. But that's because your idea of the world changes. You're like, what, Kobe's no longer here? Mm -hmm. Like, that's not the world that I live in. No. I live in a world with Kobe. Yeah. And I mean, rest in peace. But there's also, you know, I remember when MJ passed, I remember my sister called me. I knew exactly where I was actually on my way to see her in Atlanta. And she calls me. She's like, Sim, did you hear? And I was like, what? And she was so devastated because she grew up listening right. and all, you know, and as a dancer, that was an idol, too. And I was like, holy crap, like, that's insane. And I remember when I got there, we grieved yeah. together because she needed that. And I was yeah. like, dang, we don't know them, you right. know? And right. same thing this with like, stranger. yeah, same thing with Twitch, you know, and yeah. from the dance community, like when yeah. that happened, I was like, I didn't realize that I was going to take that. And I never knew him, but yeah. I didn't realize that I actually it took me a second. I, I remember again, having a conversation with Luke where I was like, man, that one, I didn't realize it was going to hit me hard, but it did. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm not even a dancer. And mm -hmm. that one hit me hard. Yeah. Just because he seems so freaking beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Like, human just a being. beautiful man in the world. Yeah. Um, well, you brought up your sister. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you. Where'd you grow up, Simi? I grew up in Florida. So Florida. Florida. <laughs> Florida. <laughs> I didn't know what gang sign to throw up for Florida. <laughs> but Florida. Um, yeah, no, I grew up in Florida. I actually grew up in India as well. I was eight when I went to India. And I came back when I was 12. Mm. And um, I was told I was going on a vacation. <laughs> so four years later, I came back and I was like, oh, that, that was... That was a really long vacation. Yeah, you know? so anytime yeah. vacation gets brought up, brought up, you're like, mm, I don't have four years. No, so. any, anytime someone's like, hey, I'm like, hey, how long? You give me you give me four hours. Like, I can't do this. No. Um, That's crazy. Yeah, we were told we were going on vacation. But it was, it was their way of, like, my parents, like, they wanted us to get educated there and things like that. And there's a whole thing there, which I didn't know until I was, like, growing up that also had to do with my grandma. And it was, like, a whole thing. And I was like, oh, this is, this is, uh this ties back really far and worked through, uh, in therapy through that too. <laughs> good times. Um, good, good couple years for you. Good couple years, but no, uh, yeah. So basically we were told like, Hey, we're going to go on vacation. And I remember like, you know, when you go to India, you know, when you go to India, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you better, you, change. Know, you better change the way you say that. Cause I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Um, when, when we go to India, it's usually you go there and you get like outfits made for, you know, cause each wedding you need like 20 outfits. Um, okay. so you come back with a bunch of outfits and you're like, okay, great. I'm ready for at least two weddings, you know, with three suitcases. <laughs> but, um, I went in and they were measuring us and I was like, oh, we're just getting outfits made. Uh, we were actually getting uniforms made because we were going to a Catholic school because it was like they spoke English to us and stuff like that. And so my parents were like, oh, they won't have such a hard time here, you know, and they also had this plan that they were going to actually come back here, sell everything and then go back to India. And that's what they wanted to do. 
Um, but they ended up not doing that. So somehow my sister and I and my grandparents were in India. So I grew up with them. That's yeah. why. Um, and my parents, even when we came back, they were always working. So we never um, really spent too much time with them. It was always with our grandparents. So even when you moved back from India after those four years, your grandparents came? Yes. So then it was all of you coming back? It was, I've literally, I grew up with my grandpa, yeah, grandparents. Wow. Yeah, my, grand, my granddad is like my main squeeze, you know? Yeah. And then, um, then my grandma and then my sister and my brothers. So we're like really a tight-knit family, but. And what brought you to LA? I just wanted to tap into my emotions. Um, <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> acting, acting did. I wanted to, I started acting when I was eight um, in India, which was funny because I did my first play there and I was like, ooh, I like this, you know? Nice. So I started like, I was like, I like to, you know, do this on the side, but that's what we were told. Get your education, become doctors, and then this is just a side passion thing. Yeah. Do it on the side in your free time so you don't like get into drugs and alcohol yeah. and other things. And they were like, and this is what you're going to focus on, but do it on the side. It's a hobby. Yeah. Um, but then I remember I was having a conversation with my dad over beer and we were just talking and, you know, I was a beer in and he was like, he was like, you know, we had a heart to heart where he was like, hey, Sam, like how's school? And I was like, school sucks, man. You know, and he's like, he's like, but you're good at it. I said, that's because I'm brown and I have to be because I can't come home unless I get straight A's, you know? So I was like, <laughs> but I don't want to. And I was like, this is not what I want to do. I just, I want to act. And he was like, okay, nobody in the family is an actor. What do you mean? And I was like, well, I want to go to LA and I'm going to pursue acting. And he goes, hey kid, like, it's really stressful for a dad, for, you know, their daughter to just be like, I'm just moving 3,000 miles away. Yeah. We know no one there. Yeah. You know no one there. What's your game plan? I was like, I'm going to go and I'm going to do a traditional way. Like, I'm going to go and I'm going to take classes and I'm going to get the agents and then go from there, you know? And he's like, okay, let's let's tell your mom, you know? And I remember Yikes. sitting down and You're my dad's- in college at this point? Yeah. And I was Pre -med doing- med or something? Pharmacy. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So uh, my dad, he was like, we were sitting at the dinner table. And dad's like, hey, guess who wants to move to L.A.? You know, and mom's like, oh, is it? That's for how he brought it up. He didn't. He, <laughs> he was also in the same page on the same page that I was because he's like, it's not going to go. This well. is going to be awful. It's not going to go well. So he's like, how do I just bring it up? And he was like, she who was guess who's going to L.A.? And then um, my mom's like, oh, is it for school? And I was like, no, I'm actually going to quit. And I'm gonna you know i'm not gonna do school gonna anymore one of the most unstable things on the you planet. know yeah and and uh no guarantee but we're just gonna do it and she was like and instantly she like put down her food and just started crying she's like we're not doing this and i was like oh my gosh and then i went to bed and i remember waking up and my mom and, and my dad are on the foot of my bed and i'm like uh you know I'm like hey guys and then my dad's like he's like sim let's talk you know and i'm like Ugh. and he's like we can't allow that right and i was like look I don't need anything from you guys. I just need emotional like support. Mm. You guys, I'm, this is, I'm going to do it. You know, just let me go. Just emotionally support me and trust that I'm going to be, I'm like, you raised a good kid. Yeah, I'm not, I'll be okay. yeah, I'm not going to go out there and just like, you know, do what you think it happens in the acting business. But yeah. you know, cause then, then my dad, like Indian people don't really talk about like stuff like that with your parents where they're like, oh, you know, like, anything sexual or anything like that. And basically in his head, he's like, you know, to get up there, you know, it's like what they're told. He's like, you yeah. might have to do, you know, things that you don't, sure, that you will sure, never, sure. we don't want you to do. Sure. And he's like, and we can't have that, you know? And I was like, trust that you raised a good daughter. Yeah. Trust yourselves and trust me. Yeah. And just let me go. I don't, I don't care if you guys don't support it. Just let me go. You know, just give me that one blessing to be like, fine, do your do thing. It. And they did. And my mom, my mom was so mad. She was like, you know what? Why leave now? Why leave later? Just leave in the next seven days. I said, what are we on the ring? It was like, it's my worst movie in the world. But I was like, yeah, sure. Let's go. So I did it in seven days. I moved. I packed my stuff. I figured out where I was going to live, which was literally in Hollywood. And I didn't know anything. Yeah. I've never been to LA before that. So I was like, fuck it. We're just going to go. Dude. And I remember on a walk with my sister, my sister was like, hey, Sim, like, you know, whatever. She's like, are you, are you scared? Like, and I'm like, bro, I'm terrified. Yeah. I'm doing something that I have no idea how to do. I don't know anyone in LA, in LA. Like I know nothing, you know? And I was like, but I know this is what I'm supposed to do. So Dude. I'm just going to fucking go do it and we'll figure it out. And my dad also said this before he left. He's like, out of my four kids, if anybody was going to do something stupid, we know, <laughs> we knew, we knew it was going to be you. By that, he meant like something ballsy, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. that something was yeah. like something out of the norm. Out of the norm. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, okay. Is your sister a doctor? She actually went to med school. She graduated and everything. And then she decided to not do that. Oh. 
Look at that. But you know, it all happened after I moved here, so it wasn't a good thing on my record because yeah. they're like, "Look what happened." Yeah, she's like, "You follow me. your dream." And <laughs> because we're, my siblings were like best friends, you know, yeah. so we're like really close, and so. I remember all of them would call me. Yeah. So my sister called me. She's like, Sam, I don't want to do this. And I'm like, holy ah. shit, we're, we're fucked. You know? Yeah, and, I was like, yeah. and I'm like, what do you want to do? She goes, I love art. And I was oh, like, oh, okay. Oh, your mom holds that on oh, you. Oh my God. I was like, it's your fault. Yeah. And, and you know, anytime they have like any issues or my sister has anything, I always stand up for them. So I'm yeah. always like the person who comes yeah. out of nowhere and is like, and mom was like, you don't live here anymore. Like, you know, you don't get to say things. And I'm like, let her do her thing. You know, it's her life, you know. Exactly. But they do. They have opened up a lot more. But yeah, so my sister, I remember when she said she didn't want to do it anymore, she hit me up and she was like, Sim, I don't want to do it. And I was like, ah, oh, okay, well, what's your game plan? Like, what do you yeah. want to do? I was like, please, I just don't quit, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I did, but don't do that, yeah. you know. And she was like, yeah, I just want to do art. I said, okay, well, make that your side hustle, but you need to have a job. You got to yeah. work, you know? And now she's actually making paintings and she's getting paid for them and she has a clientele and it's awesome. This is amazing. And she's making bank and it's awesome. This is amazing. Yeah, and she's following her passion. It makes me so happy. What and, a beautiful thing. Right? It's like your parents, your mom isn't wrong for no. what she wants for you guys. No. She wants you to be okay. Yeah. And a stable job that's guaranteed pay yeah. and you can find it anywhere. Mm -hmm is a form of that. 100%. That's a form of being okay. Being your mother, you know, she wants that for you because as, as I was growing up, I was like, this is dumb. Like, why, you know, why do we have to live our lives according to, your, to you guys? Yeah. But then I realized they were immigrants when they came here. We're first generation. Yeah. They don't want us to struggle. My dad used to be a dishwasher for yeah. the first couple of years that he lived here. They you know, know what it's like to yeah. struggle and, and he, how They don't want their kids to struggle. And they're like, we already did the struggle. We want you guys, they know get an education, get a job, get yeah. married, have kids. Yeah. This is what you're doing. Flourish. It's a thing. And, you know, and it was like, we can make jokes about it all day, but that's the truth behind it. They yeah. just love us They're so much. They're not wrong they're... for it. Mm -hmm. It just happens to be 20, not right for us. 2020 or whatever it happens to be yeah. whenever you made this decision, which yeah. is just, it's different, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're a, you're an artist. Like you want to do what you want to do. You yeah. want to create. You yeah. want to express. Like, yeah. I've danced since I was six. I started acting when I was eight. It was just something I knew I needed to be in front of things. And yeah. I needed to have a voice. And I needed to express. Yeah. And that I knew. And yeah. I just didn't know where that was headed until I got old enough to where I was like, hey, man, I'm going to go ahead and make this decision. I'm yeah. doing and what I want to do. That's what your dad meant by like, yeah. you were going to, yes. they, they had to have seen it already. Yeah, they you, don't, did. you don't, this thing doesn't just pop out of no. you. They had to have seen it as you like, as a little girl. Dude, I was a cheerleader. I was like, you know, like there was, I never stood, uh, like stood still, right. you know, like I remember being 12 and the pediatrician was telling my mom, he was like, hey, your daughter definitely has ADD. You know, and my mom's <laughs> like, no, she literally is high energy since she was born they're like you know? yeah that's what yeah. that means and they're like yeah she's like no she runs around she's my kid and that's just who she is you know yeah. she needs to occupy her time and yeah. if she doesn't she's and guess what you'd out. be doing if you were a pharmacist standing still and i i so i was a farm <laughs> tech for nine months Whew. was it just counting pills it could have been three months i don't remember <laughs> um it could have been three months and within three months i was like i can't it was two days this. yeah <laughs> i was there for 13 hours <laughs> I, I did was one like, shift. I was like, it was a lifetime. I was like, I I'm can't out. do it. I'm, I'm done. No, I saw like the pharmacist. I saw everybody. And I remember walking in and being within 30 minutes, my energy level would drop down uh, Yeah. to that, to literally this, because the only human interaction I had was the people. Yeah. And then I would turn and be like, hi, uh, first and last name, date of birth, any questions for the pharmacist? I have a great day, right. you know? And even in that, people would like bring Snickers, like the old people would bring like Snickers and stuff. And they'd be like, you know, we want to get to give it to Simi. She made my day. And I'm like, I'm meant for more. I cannot be here. I am so meant for I'm more. I'm so glad I made your day. Yeah. I was like, I'm I, meant for more. Yeah. I can't. Gladys. Taking these, right? Talk. I'm moving out of Florida. Yeah. So, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I came here. Yeah. And we got to meet on a project with uh, Andrew Batchelor, King Batch. King Batch. Um, Shout out. Who we mutually knew. Mm -hmm. And then he brought people together for uh, like a Facebook web series mm -hmm. he was producing. Mm -hmm. That's where I met you for the first time and then became aware of you and got to see uh all your stuff you've created on YouTube and IG, all, all the videos you make and hilarious and cool content. Um, hilarious. How did you get involved with Batch? Batch, I met on a on a movie um, called Where's the Money was when I first met him. Um, 
You were in that? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I was. Did you see it? I feel like I did. Yeah, I was like the asshole frat guy. Oh my God, yeah. you were. I had earrings. Oh my was, God, you were. I was very offensive. Hilarious. As a human being. Oh my God, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yeah, that's how I met him the first time. And that was actually, so you, you kind of came, like you kind of came through the uh, like YouTube, Vine, right? Like content creator world. Yes. I was coming through acting and mm -hmm. When I got off Ned's, uh, Twitter had like just come out. Mm -hmm. So social media, I always felt behind on because I just came up in a different world of acting mm -hmm. um, and child acting, which was just like class and auditions and reps. And, like, and that's it, the mm -hmm. traditional. But the industry start, started to change. And even though I was aware of it, I, I just never felt like anytime I tried to catch my like social media uh, pursuit. I, I just always felt behind. I never felt in love with it. And sometimes I was shaming myself for it. Like, man, I really need to be doing this more, but I'd rather be in class or like acting on TV and film. Like I don't mm -hmm. want to do this shit, but sometimes I would, right. I would never catch a rhythm with it. And being on Where's the Money with uh, Batch and Logan Paul actually set me free because these were two of the biggest uh, people on social media. Still are. Still are. Still are. And I saw what their life was like. I saw how much they were hustling it. We were filming 12 hour days as you do on a movie. Mm -hmm. And they were staying up until like five in the morning editing their vlogs oh and shit gosh, that they yeah. were making. And they were filming and posting all the time while we were making a movie. Mm -hmm. And I saw their hustle mm -hmm. and it actually set me free because I went, oh, wow. Like, this is why they're so big, first of all. Mm -hmm. It's not random. Mm -hmm. They're working their asses off at mm -hmm. this. And I got to see what it looked like. And I, I was like, that's not for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to work social media that hard. Mm -hmm. I love being on a movie set for 20 hours. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that that bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, I was able to, like, let this, like, monkey Wait, off my back. Yeah. yeah like, I could stop beating myself up about it. I knew that's not my path. Like, it's that's like not social for me. pressure. That you felt probably yeah. right. Of like yeah. I have to be, mm -hmm. I have to be that guy. Because everybody's doing it, so yeah. you feel like you have to. You're like, okay, if I'm not acting, I got to be doing this. Yes. Yeah. And then I saw the hustle that it is to really be doing it at a high level, and was like, that's why they're doing it, and I'm not. For not. Me. Yeah. Uh, so it was it was actually liberating, and yeah. I really respected their hustle. Mm -hmm. it, it that also set me free. It took my judgment off people who were crushing it at that stuff. Yep. Because I'm like, oh, this is no joke. Yeah. They're working their fucking asses off at mm -hmm. this and they're funny and like good at it. Like, mm -hmm. oh, wow, this is OK. Yeah, it, it set me free. I was no longer judging uh, uh, content creators mm -hmm. and I was no longer judging myself for not being one. Yeah, that's that's a big one. Yeah. I actually when I started doing it, it came out of. It came out. So I came in and I was like, I'm going to do the traditional way, Yeah, you know, and I really didn't I didn't know anything about social media. By the way, I was behind, too, you know, and. I just never really cared for it. And I remember when people would be like, oh, do you have Facebook, blah, blah, blah. No. You know, I remember getting Facebook in um, college and I was like, this is dumb. You know, and I was like, I'm not doing this, whatever. Kept it moving. And I remember moving here, taking classes and auditioning. I had started auditioning. I actually booked a role. It was a pilot. And I was like, yeah. oh, this is, yeah. And I was within my first three months of being here. And I was like, let's go, right? And I was like, I'm, I'm on the right path. This is what I want to be doing. Yeah. And I remember sitting at the table read and I was at the table read and a producer that they didn't have before that probably was the last one they needed to like, you know, get the show on the road. Um, he was there and he was like asking everybody. He's like, oh, and then he, he came up to me and he was like, Simi, your tape was amazing. He's like, I watched it, whatever. And it was really good. I was like, thank you, man. I was like, yeah, this is, this is an awesome opportunity. Thank you. And he's like, yeah, um, Oh, and he goes, do you have social media? And he's like, do you have a YouTube channel? And I'm like, no. And he goes, uh, oh, okay. Do you have an Instagram? And I was like, yeah. And it was private. I was like, yeah. And it's, you know, like 80 My people on it. From, from yeah, yeah, friends yeah. and family from back home. <laughs> yeah. If that, you know. Yeah. And um, he was like, oh, so you don't have any. I was like, no. And he's like, oh, okay. I was like, wait, do I need it? Because I started questioning. I was like, what, what the yeah. hell? And I was like, do I need it? And he goes, no, 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 absolutely not. No, you're good. And then I never heard anything back from them. I was on a table read and I didn't have like lawyers or anything. So I didn't know what any of this meant or they could Yo, kick me out what? or anything. Yeah. 
So you I was were on like, a table read, and because you didn't have any social media presence, they were like, nope. Yep. For a pilot? For a pilot. Listen, I don't know if this they was a good anything. thing for your life because you started it, but this is pilots don't even get seen by anyone. So it, it doesn't, a yeah. pilot's to get the thing picked up. Yeah. That's insane. I think it was because they wanted to, to get it picked up. I don't know, like, I don't remember anybody else. I was just like, whatever. So I remember Damn. not hearing anything. And after like a week, I was like, what the hell? And it, it hit me. I was like, this sucks. And I remember yeah. talking to my sister. I was at Barnes & Noble, second floor at the Grove, <laughs> just crying. I was crying. And my sister, because we were talking, I was so frustrated. I was like, what the hell? Why, why do I need social media for this, right? And my sister's like, Sim, play the game. She's Welcome like, you're funny as hell. Mm -hmm. She's like, you're so funny. Play the game. And I was like, I don't want to play a stupid game. I want to act, bro. Like, I was like, this is dumb. I'm not doing it. And then I was like, so I started. And I remember <laughs> making a single video and I, and I was also working three jobs at the same time. I was going to classes, working three jobs and then doing social media. Actor life, baby. Uh, <laughs> and um, I started with one video like a month if I could, if I felt like it. And then I remember in 2017, um, towards the end of 2017, I was like, hey man, I'm just gonna start doing this. So I quit, literally everything. And I just started, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do two vlogs because vlogs were working for we're everybody. Yep. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna do two vlogs, but I also wanna create a skit because that's what I like. Yeah. So I would do two vlogs and I would do a skit, two vlogs, skit, two vlogs. And I did that for all of 2017 or midway through 2017 and on. And then 2018, I was like, nah, fuck the vlogs. I hate vlogging. I hate it. <laughs> what? I have to sit there and be like, everywhere I go, uh, you know, like that's right now I would have to pull out my yeah. thing and be like, you know, yeah. I'm not doing that. I don't want to do that. I want to connect with people. So I was like, yeah. I just want to make, I just want to make content, but I want to make it skits. I'm yeah. going to do. I want to make silly shit. Just stuff that I think is funny. Yeah. Get a concept. And I always would think in like YouTube form where I would think long term, like yeah. long form. So an idea would come and I, if I could make it into three parts, beginning, middle, end. Yeah. Fire. Three jokes in it. Done. That's yeah. a video. And I liked to work with my friends and create characters for them. Like, if I knew you were going to be in a video, I'd be like, oh, I can think of something. That's how we did art. Right. And I was like, oh, yeah, Devin. I was like, we should do that one where, where I'm, like, stalking you. Yeah. Right? Yeah, we did, like, a you uh, parody, parody type thing on yeah. Simi's channel. It's yeah. funny. Yeah. Um, so I was like, we should do stuff like that. And I was like, that's what I'm going to start doing. And I'm going to do two a week, and that's it. I'm not going to veer off this. So I started doing Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday, Friday. And, that and I remember my friends, they were like, Sim, why would you do that? Like, that's just... There's no reason for you to do that. And they're like, because that's just time commitment on a different level. I was like, what else am I going to do with my time? I've quit everything. So I need to do this. I this is what I want to do. Work. Yeah. So I started. And I remember my, I was with Awesomeness. I still am. But I was with them. <laughs> this is like when I started. Yeah. And I remember uh, both of my managers on Awesomeness, they were like, oh, uh, Sim, like, you're probably not going to gain a lot of traction this way. I was like, I'm just going to do it. This is what I want to do. I don't give a shit about traction. I think I'm going to have fun doing this, so I'm going to do it. Hell yeah. And I started having fun, and people started really picking up on that, and that is what kind of blew me up. Hell yeah. And I remember everyone was like, and I, people were like, damn, skits are working? Skits were not working at the time. Yeah. And they started working for me, and I was like, this is my lane, I'm going to keep in it, you know? Yeah. So that's kind of how I got into it. And that's actually how I found out, um, or I met Batch, was just through friends and through social media. Yeah, you guys were all, we all in lived at Vine. super hustle culture. We all lived at Vine. While doing so, vines? But I never did vine. Okay. okay. You know, I, yeah, I didn't, yeah. you know, okay. I yeah. downloaded it. I never even watched it. Because yeah, I was yeah. like, I'm not doing this. And what if yeah, I get I into this? I I'm just going to. I missed vine entirely. I yeah, never got same. on it. But yeah. yeah, you guys all lived in the social media tower in Hollywood. Yep, Hollywood. And uh, when they started telling us, like, you know, you couldn't film there and things like that. Because, like, there was nobody but social media kids in that place, you right. know. And then they had, like people like waiting for each apartment because they knew that the social media kids lived there. You right. know, all of us were at the same time right. living there. So right. they were like, like we had Lele, we had Batch, uh, Logan, right. Jake, everybody, yeah, George, I would see, me. Like when I was aware of you guys and I would see each person's like stuff on social media, I would see like, oh, they're like in the same it place. It would be the Everyone same lived carpet, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same background. Yeah. Because we were just shooting in like up and down like the hallways, <laughs> right. you know? All of our doors were open. You would just walk in and that's just how we would be like, hey, I need you for a video. All right, give me 20 minutes, you know? And we just show up. And that's kind of how everybody started like working together. Yeah. And that's how we found each other. That and, like, sounds like such a cool time. Yeah, it was. To have that like it open was. door actual community. It's actually mm -hmm. rare in LA. 
I've got a great community in LA, mm -hmm. but LA is fucking massive. So everyone, Huge. every one of my friends lives in a different neighborhood. Yeah. So if I want to go walk into their open door, it's 35 minutes away. Yeah. To have everyone that close mm -hmm. is amazing because yeah. also creating takes a lot. So it's got to be somewhat convenient. Yes. Because it's not convenient. Yes. Like already. So a lot of it has to be. Mm -hmm. If you got to drive an hour to start filming, like no. you're just putting more in front of you getting it done. But yeah. being able to knock on someone's door, be like, you'll yeah. be in this with me. Yeah. And then fire. And then everybody started moving out because they started putting, you know, can't don't have, film here. Yeah. And we're like, I remember at one point we got a notice and they were like, oh, you can't film here because, uh, and you can't film like inside your apartments. I was like, bro, we pay for these yeah. and we're not endangering anybody's privacy. Yeah, they absolutely inside my can't tell you, you can't what do that. to do in your apartment. And they're like, oh yeah, sorry, we didn't mean that. I was like, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you, you did. did, you tried. Fix it, you know? <laughs> and then everybody just started moving out because it was like, and now we all live away from each other and we're yeah. like, shit, you know? So now it's you like harder. Plan days to get together. Yeah, and, um, like, hey, just show up. Yeah. Um. So yeah, then, and speaking of bash like he's he's just one of the most humble people you know and like so he the best. was down to work with anybody yeah. he's literally down for anything yeah you could literally just be like hey bash i need you for this he doesn't even give a shit he's like sure let's do it yeah. you know and you're like listen to the concept first so what if it's shit he's like i don't care he just loves to work you know yeah he, just he loves to, to work it. and he wants to be with his friends and that's it and yeah. i think it's kind and it, you just work with him yeah he's, he's so funny he hit, i yeah. told you he hit me up this week to be in a little short of his he hit me up like at fucking 10 p.m yep. to <laughs> shoot something the next day and i'm like yeah, yeah okay <laughs> right because you were like okay i'm like yeah i know what it'll be it'll be it'll be good like it'll be great to see him sure let's go yeah is, is that how he got you for context pretty much yeah yeah same yeah like you know we had same. been on where's the money and we, we had done some stuff together and mm -hmm. stayed in touch and whatever and he's mm -hmm. like Yo, want to come on this uh, like web series thing? It'll be cool. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. Same. He was. He texted me. He's like, Sim, I have this idea for a web series. Uh, you want to be in it? Just like that. And I was like, Cool. It's just gonna be like an episode or like me showing up and like a cameo, like he does with all of his friends. He yeah. has his serious actors and then he has his friends. We'll yeah. just come in. We'll do something and we'll leave. Yeah. Uh, and then we're both on it for like eleven to thirteen days, and that yeah, was yeah, fun. Yeah, it was a full <laughs> shoot. It was a full shoot. Hey. You thought you were showing up for a day? Nope. <laughs> no, it was no. a full shoot. I remember getting on the table read. I remember seeing the script for the first time and yeah. I was like and I'm flipping through the pages and I just see you yeah. know my name come up over and over and I'm like damn I'm in every episode yeah. and I was like I was like Matt you gotta let us know ahead of time you know and I have to call you my team tell me to block out yeah. some time I gotta call my team sorry I'm busy for 13 days you know <laughs> yeah it was yeah. fun though it was I, fun. I really liked I really liked meeting you like meeting more of Batch's people mm -hmm. Fonz Fonz I love him love him too yeah he's the man easy uh easy Easy, dude. Easy. I want to say. Shit. I want to say the name. I want to yeah. say the name, but we can't. Yeah, we can't. We can't say the whole name. <laughs> no, 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 no. We can't put her. No, like we that. know. Not. We know what Easy's real name is. Yes. and we won't say it. And um, uh, I remember. Timmy hired a private detective to find it. <laughs> I did. I did. It was. It was a. Pretty <laughs> And Easy was pissed, and she's still pissed. And I remember Batch was like, "How do you?" And I was like, "Hey, man, I got my ways." Yo, I got my ways. Uh, <laughs> she kills me. Her stuff just makes me laugh, she's man. So I love Easy. She's so funny. Outside of her stuff, when you see her, she's like the sweetest person on the face of this planet. Yeah. And the way she talks to you, she's so calm, and like you're like, dude, two different people. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> two no, different she's people. like wild on her yeah. shit. And then she's just like cool, grounded, chill. Like, what's up? Like, yeah. she's the homie. Yeah. Off it. Yeah. And then she's wild. Yeah. Yeah. Her like being the grandma, like. So funny. Yeah. That I it's, love. It's so great. Yeah. That's that's pure joy right there. Yeah. If I ever did anything with her on her channel, that's what I would want to do. Yeah. I'd let's dress up as old people yep. and just go be inappropriate. And then me holding a walker, just crying. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, "What happened, my grandma?" <laughs> Oh, my shit. grandma. The grief is back. <laughs> <laughs> it's hitting me again. It's Dude. not linear. Dude, it will hit like that. It, Grief does it that. Does. It'll come up and you're like, oh shit, I'm supposed to do comedy today. Yep. <sighs> uh, yep. No, that's actually what another reason. Puddle. Yeah, I barely created last year for that reason. Yeah. I created more in the last month than I did all last year. You know, and that's probably fine yeah. in terms of like the rhythm. Like you yeah. hustle your shit. It's mm -hmm. probably fine to have a season where you're actually just like in your humanity and yeah. not in the expression and putting out. Because it's a particular energy. It was also hard to do that. Yeah, especially if you do comedy and you try to make people laugh. You're like, I am fucking crying right now and I can't make anybody laugh, yeah. you know? And I would have like two, three hour breakdowns and he had to sit through them with me. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I was like, I'm sorry you're getting like the worst side of me right now. And he yeah. was like, hey man, like if this is the worst, we're good. Yeah. You know? And I was like, thank you. Thank yeah. You. But 
Um, I, I was on a I was on a premiere. Uh, I was on a two week premiere and press tour in Mexico in 2016 for this movie I did. We're going to three different cities. Mm -hmm. It's like premieres for this movie because it was a spring break movie set in Mexico with with a like Mexican production and. Mm -hmm. Doing this this premiere and press tour, two weeks of like parties and like happy fun press. And the movie is a spring break thing. So all the press is like drinking and mm -hmm. like all this shit. Mm -hmm. Three days into this trip, I, I get the call that my parents are getting divorced. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and I'm so I, sorry. I couldn't leave because like we had to do this thing. It was like a four year build up to this thing. I couldn't yes. leave. So I, I just had to. I, there were like two parts of me. I had to like be this guy for all the dinners and the parties oh, and, yeah. and the premieres and all the interviews. I just had to pretend I'm good mm -hmm. and I'm having fun and I'm mm -hmm. in Mexico and it's great to be back. And then anytime I would get alone, I would just fucking shatter. Yeah. Um, it was such a inappropriate time to go through. I mean, that was the heaviest grief I've ever gone through and yeah. took still processing that one. Yeah. But um, yeah, to have to be in a setting where like I had to be. Let's talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to, to be where I had to be like the guy, you know, having the fun guy, mm -hmm. star of the movie yeah. in Mexico drinking, you know. Dang. Difficult. It's crazy. And that's actually something I remember in 2019, I went to VidCon and they had like comedians on stage on. or whatever. Hold on. I'm, gonna just, I'm just going to turn it at your mouth. Well. Hello? For listeners, that's going to sound weird. Turn I'm sorry. Luke, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the microphone was just not pointed at your Is face. Is this good? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just, it's direction. It's fine. Hey, hey it's okay. Um, VidCon 2019. <laughs> yeah, so they had, a, it was a panel for comedians, right? And uh, social media comedians. And so it was all guys and then me. And I felt the, like the coolest chick on the block. And I was like, thank you, you know? And I was yeah. like, representing for the women. Let's Hell go. Hell yeah. And... Everything was great. And uh, I remember somebody asked me to like, oh, you know, talking about creating and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I remember just I just started to talk about like and this was 2019. So nothing had happened that I knew of in my life where I was like coming off of it, you know, and I was just so I started talking about how like it's difficult for. Oh, it was to give creators some grace and for them to give themselves some grace where, you know, when you go through stuff, it's like when you're creating and that's your job, you just have to put another face on mm -hmm. and that's where the white knuckling comes from. You put another mm -hmm. face on, you do it, camera turns off, you're a whole different person. Yep. You know, because you're going through something or whatever the yep. case is. So when you when you hit that place where like you you just can't do it anymore, you yep. can't fake it anymore, you're you're like, oh, I gotta take a step back. So like if you're a creator, like people that you follow and things like that you look up to, if they happen to stop, check in on them before yeah. you sit there and be like, oh, you used to make videos. Yeah, where are you at now? Stuff? Yeah, where are you at now? And I'm like, yeah. no, it's probably because they're, they're going, going through, through something some and they really can't white knuckle through this one. Yeah. You know, did you see that uh, Machine Gun Kelly clip from the Drew Barrymore show? Did you see this in the last month? I think he talked about him. He just like yeah. came out and was like in a mood. I don't know. He was painting her nails. I don't know why, but it was like lovely. He's like sitting yeah. there painting her nails and he just like was like kind of. She was just like, what's going on? He was yeah. kind of closed off. And it was awesome because he expressed something I'm sure every creator mm -hmm. or public person feels, which is like, hey, I'm just like not in the mood today mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. like be my normal like mm -hmm. entertainer self. Mm -hmm. And I'm struggling with that because here I am doing your show and this is the only time I have to do this. Mm -hmm. But I'm just like not there and mm -hmm. I feel bad about that, mm -hmm. but I also can't change it. And it's like, a vicious cycle. Yeah. And they just had this really through. beautiful moment where like she like loved him through it. And I just She's such a I oh my gosh. Oh, love what? Her. I just Love. I just want to give her a hug. Me too. I just want to just give me a hug. Me too. You know, I just want to feel Drew Barrymore. Me hug. too. But I, I just like love just... that moment. It was so pure for anyone who's yeah. who has to wear a public mm -hmm. face. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it comes naturally to us. Yeah. I love doing it. Yeah. But there are times mm -hmm. where that's just not where I'm at. Yeah. I'm not in uh, extroverted Devin mode. I'm not no. in connection mode. Even mm -hmm. I'm like going through whatever, even yeah. if it's not as major as like a parent's divorce or a grandparent's death, like even just a personal, like just a day where I'm like off, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And you just, sometimes you're just, you're just off. Yeah. And you don't, you can't explain it. You just yeah. don't feel up for anything. You don't want to talk to anybody. Yeah. You just want to be alone yeah. and you just want to sit in your like hole. But that's also dangerous too, because it's like, you have to find 
that place where you can turn back from it, yeah. you know, too, because before you know it, you're weeks in, you're months in, yeah. you know, I was a year in and I was like, and, but every mm. day I would beat myself up over the fact that I was like, okay, you're depressed. Now get your ass up and go do something. Mm. And then I'd be like, but I don't feel like doing it. I don't yeah. feel like creating. I don't feel like getting in front of people. I don't feel like yeah. putting a face on and getting in front of a camera and turning it on and being like, let me create something funny or something yeah. just whatever that I know is gonna hit on on social media. Yeah. I don't want to, Yeah, you know? And then I would go into the this and like, okay, so what else are you doing with your time? Up. You're a piece yeah. of shit. And I would like, and then I would go back into a circle and then before I knew it, next day, yeah. before I knew it was Monday again or Friday and I'd be like, well, it's the weekend, you know, I'll see you on Monday and we'll try it again. Grief is exhausting enough. You you really have to give yourself space and grace in grief because it is exhausting enough as a process. If you're adding the element of, of beating yourself up for going through it, no. Oh, like yeah. that's just mean yeah. to yourself. Yeah. I've, I've gone through enough cycles of grief that, um, uh, we have probably haven't talked since I was on the movie Rust. Yeah. And after mm -hmm. Rust, when I came back, I like knew, oh, mm -hmm. well, this is going to be a fucking process. It's not going to be good. And yeah. I had gone through enough grief that I actually was just like, I'm going to not, I'm going to go through this until I'm ready to take action out of it. And it was a few months of, of like, I knew, I, I knew mm -hmm. this is going to be rough and like, there were days I wasn't getting out of bed. Mm -hmm. There were days I was just either on my phone or distracting myself or just mm -hmm. like binge watching something until I went to sleep and mm -hmm. feeling like no fucking joy or anything mm -hmm. for for weeks. Uh, and it ended up being months, which was okay. I knew I'm gonna go through this until I have some sense of strength that I can actually like Basically, I can't resist the wave of this grief. Yeah. It's going to come. Yeah. And I can't try and like hold on to a habit while I'm going through the initial like energy of this. I'm gonna have to let some of this fucking pass with time mm -hmm. until I have a little bit of space to go like, okay, mm -hmm. let me call my therapist. Yeah. You know, like yep. let me start somewhere. Yeah. Let me move through this in some way. But for a while. I wasn't even starting any of that and I wasn't beating myself up because sometimes shit happens and you go, let me take any pressure off myself to be anything other than alive right yeah. now. Let me just be alive. That's that's the part that I did, I guess that I'm starting this year is like unlearning all of those habits that mm. I'm used to. I grew up like, you know, in our family, we didn't really talk about shit. Yeah. We didn't, we never did. It's a lot of family. Yeah, you know, yeah. and you just, you just, go about your business and like if something is like completely wrong then it's like hey this is something that's going on whatever but it was never like hey i'm feeling like shit today and i don't really don't know why yeah or i can't figure it out or hey this is what's going on in my life or i'm going through a relationship then you know you're getting cheated on and you don't like you don't know how to tell your parents that because first of all you're not supposed to have a boyfriend <laughs> 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 can't do that <laughs> what do you mean what relationship no um <laughs> outside of that you know it would you don't talk to your parents about stuff like that you yeah just, I, we never did yeah so and randomly and you knew you were doing something wrong if you ended up back in that relationship you just got cheated on so now you can't tell your siblings either because yeah, they're like you're they're a like, fucking you're idiot, idiot. <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> get out of it you know yeah fuck your emotions yeah when, this is dumb you're being an idiot you're doing it to <laughs> yourself you're like i know this i just don't know what to do yeah you know and but because you can't tell them they can't give you that nice reminder yeah of, just that shove to yeah, you know stop off the cliff mm -hmm. just, you're that's what you know yeah and um so it was just you doing it to yourself over and over again. Yeah. So it's like, it, and okay, I'm going to get through it. Yeah. I got this. Yep. That's kind of what I grew up with. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I remember, you know, in cheerleading, I, I was a flyer. So anytime I would fall off of a stunt or something, you know, we had this coach, not going to name him. <laughs> we had this coach who would literally, you, you get brought up like this, you know, and, and the coach would be like, you, you'd fall and everybody would be gathered. And he's like, anything broken? Can you stand up? Okay, get back up. And that's what I'm used to. <laughs> You know, it was like, again, white knuckling through everything. And yeah. I was like, I got it. I'll figure it out, whatever. So I never was able to talk about things. Yeah. I never was able to express my emotions. I still have trouble expressing expressing my emotions, but I'm way better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes it comes out of frustration where I'm like, ah, you know, and I just have to attack mode. I mean, there's mm -hmm. so many things that I'm unlearning and trying to do the, you know, the healthier approach to things. Yeah. But it's like, 
it, it's just so hard. I mean, that's kind of where grief serves a major function in our life. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're never gonna get through life without grief. It's it's Inevitable. gonna happen to all of us many, yeah. many, many times. Yeah, um, but you're it, a robot. it does serve a function in that way of like, it is the time that you will be forced to reckon with your emotions. You'll be forced to meet them. Yeah. Um, I heard a great metaphor on grief, which is like, uh, imagine the grief as like this this massive uh, ball of energy or emotion uh, within you um, and or around you mm -hmm. and that it doesn't get smaller, but you grow around it. Mm -hmm. And I really, really liked that. Yeah, like, that's... Like that experience, when, when the experience happens that causes the grief, it feels so big because mm -hmm. it is, it's literally changing your world. Mm -hmm. And just the thought that like, as you're with those emotions longer and going through that process, yeah, it's not actually shrinking, but you're growing. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, that is beautiful. Yeah, that yeah. that helped me when someone said that. I was like, okay. Yeah. So I just need time to yeah. grow. <laughs> I just, I'm growing <laughs> still at this age. so big. <laughs> I thought I stopped growing after middle school. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, even though you were going through this, mm -hmm. I feel like in the last two years, maybe that's just what I was seeing on the socials, but you have gotten, you were already doing this when we did contact, but you um, have gotten deep in your stunt training and martial yeah. arts and fighting mm -hmm. and you're like a badass stunt person. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, no. thank you. Yes, thanks. Bye. Um, I'll take my leave. Uh, no, <laughs> I um, I started doing martial arts when I was 12. Okay. I was 12 years old and I came back from India and I was like, I wanted to spend more time with my brothers and they were already doing martial arts. And I was like, oh, this they're so cool. I want to be cool. And I was I like, I want to be like, ninja? yeah, I was like, I want to be like them there. And I get to spend time with, I get to be in class with them after school. I just wanted to be around my brothers. And I was, That's cause great. I, wasn't That's around precious. them for four years, you know? Oh, it was, I was just in India. you and your sister? Mm -hmm. And my grandparents, that's oh, it. Oh, wow. So I was like, I want to spend time with my brothers. Absolutely. And I was like, what do they do after school? And they're like, martial arts. And I was like, done. Put me <laughs> in, coach, you know? <laughs> Mom, pay for me too. Thank you. <laughs> and um, so anyway, so I started martial arts with them and I fell in love with it. I totally fell in love with it. They, I remember they got their black belts. They were already blue belts by the time I got there. Okay. And I was a white belt. And I was like, we're not even in the same class. This yeah, sucks, yeah. you know? <laughs> but... Um, but then, you know, once I started like really getting into it, I remember you could only go to class for four days a week. I would go for five. And then I remember they had to talk to my mom and they were like, hey, you know, like you only pay for four. Like she, <laughs> she can't be coming to the fifth class, you know, <laughs> she's always here, you know. And I was like, but I love it. You know, I just want to be really good. And um, yeah, and I got my black belt and then I was like, I, I'm going to continue. And then I continued for a couple of years and then I went to college and I just remember being in college and just doing dance. I was just really focused on just dancing the whole time. And I was on a bunch of different teams and I was like, ah, I didn't have time and I wasn't doing it then. And then I came and then I got done with that and then I restarted, you know, training and stuff. And then when I got to LA, I was like, I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna continue this, right? But instead of going to classes, I was like, I'm actually gonna just train with people. And I started training uh, with 8711, uh, Jeremy Marinas, he brought me in, which is, they're like, the action people they they've done like deadpool and things like that oh yeah yeah it's david he's the director and he owns the gym yeah proper yeah fight choreography oh my gosh yeah. yeah and and even when i went in they didn't treat me like a stunt person they treated me like an actor you know yeah so even then i had to like sign waivers that were like you know if there's anything crazy like we'll bring in a stunt woman for wow. you yeah 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 and i remember being like why the hell do i i'm trained in this why do i need a stunt person you need you need them. Yeah, yeah, 100%. yeah. When you see what's going on, they're such badasses, yeah, you know. Yeah. And I was like, you know, and like I would see them, and I'd see bruises, you know. And I remember doing one fight scene by myself, and I remember within the first three hours of doing it, it was 2017. I did it, and I just remember getting bruised up and down yeah. by blocking, and yeah. I was like, oh my god, this hurts so much, you know. And so yeah. every time, you know, uh, Derek, he was the one uh, filming it. Every time he'd be like, oh, sorry, you know, because he was doing manual focus. And he's like, oh, every time, like, I'm sorry, like, I did, I wasn't able to focus. And I'd be like, oh, my God, we have to do the same sequence again. And yeah. it was like nine hours. And I was yeah. like, I threw up twice in those nine hours. <laughs> I had bruises all over me. Um, 
But you King. loved it. Yeah, but I loved it. And I was like, ah, I want to continue doing this. You know, you feel so good. And especially when you know you can. It looks so badass. It's so fun. I, I love watching your videos of you just like kicking some ass. Thank um, you. You made one with your boyfriend. Mm -hmm. You guys made this like cute little like a rom-com fight scene. Yeah. And I absolutely loved it. I thought it was so cute and fresh. <laughs> and so he's a badass uh, Mr. Stunt guy as well, or you're no. training him? No, he's he's an actor. He's done his own stunts before. Okay. He's done his own like training before. And um, so he was like, I remember when we met and stuff, we talked about all of this and he's like, you know, you're really you're a martial artist. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, well, I've done some combat too, you know? And then <laughs> we talked about like, hey, it would be cool to have like, I'm small compared to him. Yeah. Like, dude's 5'11 and just... Big. You're tiny compared to most. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you. You're badass, though. You're badass. You. You're badass. I yeah. wouldn't fight you. I'm scared. <laughs> you know what's funny is when people are like, you don't look intimidating, but then when you see, see the like clips? the weapons yeah, and yeah. stuff that you can do, they're like, maybe. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. And um, but yeah, we did, we talked about it. And we're like, we should do something, you know. And then we wanted to do like a bigger project. And then I was like, hey, let's introduce us and see how that goes. Yeah. With like you know, people. Yeah. <laughs> and so then we introduced it with that smaller project and it was just, we had so much fun doing it. We did it in 45 minutes and we're like, no way. Yeah, we it, did it in 45 I enjoyed minutes. it so much. It looked, it looked so fun. It mm -hmm. felt so fun. And like, it was cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Um, so what's, uh, what's on the horizon for you? What's next for you? Cindy? Um, you know, just really working on the mental health stuff. Yeah. Really, really getting into that. Yeah. Um, and really just the unlearning and learning part, it's so exhausting, but it's actually so like, once you start doing it, it feels so much healthier. Yeah. And you're like, I, this is what I want to do. You know, I yeah. just want to really be a healthy human being mentally, emotionally. I want to be totally tapped in. Yeah. Um, if I'm feeling something, I want to get to the bottom of why I'm feeling it versus being like, no, thank you. I was like, that's an emotion. That's not, I'm not smiling. I don't want it. You know, I'm not laughing. I don't want it. I'm not making somebody laugh. I don't care. Mm. I don't, I don't want anything to do with that emotion. But now I'm like, I'm like, you know, I'll see like old people walking. I'm crying. And I'm like, I know why <laughs> I love old people. Like I love the elderly, you know, Yeah. you know, I, it's just, that's, I'm close to my grandparents. Hence I love the elderly yeah. and I just want to do anything I can to help them in any yeah. which way. And I would hope that if anybody encountered my grandpa, like they would help him too, Yeah. you know? Um, so yeah, I'm like really, I really, that's what's on the horizon. I just mm. want to really do that. Uh, get back more into the martial arts stuff, just more training, mm -hmm. um, and really work on acting and being a traditional actor. Yeah. And I really want to get more into that. And if that means creating more, so be it. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. What uh, about you? Well, I'm going to hustle these podcasts for the year and, and then I'll take a new look, uh, at where we're at in a year. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually finishing Rust. So I'm gonna finish Rust. Okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna yeah. go back to that set. When does that happen? Uh, in a couple months. Okay. We'll go finish. I don't know when it'll come out. Mm -hmm. um, and then music's kind of been on the back burner, but I'll, I'll make some new music this year too. I, I have a lot of, I feel like I have a lot of space right now uh, for opportunities and creating and, mm -hmm. and stuff stuffs that I'm not even seeing mm -hmm. um, is coming my way, which I'm excited about. Oh, and I'm also going to be in my friend's uh, Halo uh, sh uh, fan film. Oh, that's my, so cool. Yeah, my buddy makes some really cool short films and he's doing a, a Halo ODST Pause. film. Pause, who is it? Steven Lunsford. Are you gonna be in it? No, oh, but, but you we, know Steven? Yes. Really? Yeah. I've known Steven for like we go him and I go way back. We just know each other through Twitter. And yeah. it's the funniest thing because we all have like we have mutual friends that yeah. are like all, you know, martial artists and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah, and that's why. And that's we just know each other. So dope. Yeah, he's talked to me about it before. Yo! Yeah, he's I love me. that. Yeah. I love that. Um, he's awesome. well, I hope we get to work together again. Yeah. And I would love to see you in like a rom-com that does have some like fighting, ele like some martial arts elements. I don't know what that looks like. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Yeah, yeah, but in that Such world. So I'm just putting that out into the universe for you. I would love to see you as like leading lady, but badass, but like cute, funny rom-com. Thank okay? you, a sarcastic badass. I want to be yeah. the girl version of Deadpool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not Gwenpool, but. Close. <laughs> Close. <laughs> it's good. Close to that. Um, thanks yeah. for coming on. Uh, for everyone follow Simi on, on all the things. Go watch that video of her and her mans on her. It's, it's on Instagram, right? Yes. Luke, a.k.a. Superman. Luke, a.k.a. Superman. <laughs> uh, watch them be cute. It's great. Uh, and then all uh, Simi's great content on TikTok. Thank and you, guys. Thanks, IG, Jeff. YouTube. This was nice.
By the way, when Dev told me about this podcast, he literally said, I was like, hey, what do I need to do? I need to be prepared in any way. He's like, no, we're just going to talk. And I was like, what is, <laughs> you don't have topics? Like, what are we going to talk about? Grief. That's what we talked about. Hey, you brought us there. <laughs> I did. And actually, I, did. I love it because uh, the more we like can talk about it, the better for everyone culturally because yeah. it's universal. We're all going through it. Yeah. And no. And that's another thing. It's like we're not alone in it. That's it. That's like the biggest thing is like. We're not alone. They're not alone. You're not alone in your grief. That process. Yeah, yeah, at all. And we're all dealing with our own kind of grief. And the biggest thing is please be kind to each other. That's like, yeah. it's like, it's crazy. Cause like when someone's unkind to you, you're like, dude, do you know the you shit know I'm, going I'm going through right through? now? Yeah. You know, yeah. but then you have to put that on the other side too. And it's like, yep. that's the most important thing is you have to be kind to people. Yep. Everyone's and to yourself. going through shit. Yeah. Kind to them, to other people and to yourself. That's a big one too. That's yeah. what I'm learning is you got to be kind to yourself. Because the way sometimes I've, like, talked to myself in the past, it's mean, yeah. you know? And I'm like, I would never say this to my siblings or my loved ones nope. or my best friends or my friends or a human being. Yep. Yet but I'm able to, to tell you. myself this. And you can't do that shit. Nope. Nah, man. You're the most precious thing in the world. So well, treat yourself as You're such. in a beautiful time of your life then. Yeah. That this is, like, integrating and flowing and growing. I love it. Yeah. We're all growing up, babies. Growing up. Thanks for listening. <laughs> See us next week. Thanks for listening to that Onami podcast. Onami is like Ned's Declassified for adulthood. Visit onami.co for free lessons on personal finance, career readiness, personal development, and more, all taught by expert influencers and creators. We've got everything you wish you learned in school so you can thrive in adulthood. That's onami.co. See you there.